We recently received four pet feeders from Pet Libro, and we've spent the last week testing them out. We're very excited to review them, and Pet Libro gave us a promo code to pass along to our viewers, which you can find in the description. While Pet Libro did send us the feeders, they're not paying us for the video and are fine with us sharing any potential flaws in our honest review. We'll be testing three Granary Wi Fi feeders, which I'll refer to as the Wi Fi feeders, and one Granary Camera feeder, which I'll refer to as the Camera feeder. For clarification, sake, I should point out that the camera feeder also works through Wi-Fi. We currently have three cats, so we devised a plan for the test. We'd try the Wi-Fi feeders for four days, and then we'd replace one of the Wi-Fi feeders with the camera feeder and go for another four days. Let's start! The unboxing was quick. The power cord, food bowl, and instructions are all easily found inside the feeder. The only tricky part was lifting the food tank because it needed a bit of pressure, and I was nervous I might break it. Still, not really worth worrying about. The feeder's power adapter works between 100 and 240 volts, so it's also suited for Europe. That being said, the power cord I received was specifically meant for the US, a snag that I quickly resolved by getting an adapter. While the feeders need to be plugged in to work, they can also run on 3D batteries in case of a power outage. But it's essential not to use rechargeable batteries. Since these pet feeders are controlled through Wi-Fi, they come with an application available for both iOS and Android. The Wi-Fi feeders can be added to the app via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, but you still must connect the feeder to the Wi-Fi in both cases. The camera feeder can also be added by using the feeder's camera to scan a QR code. Both feeders work on 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz Wi-Fi networks, which is an improvement over many feeders on the market. I added the Wi-Fi feeders using the Bluetooth method. The adding process is straightforward, plus the devices come with a step-by-step -step handbook that walks you through it. Here's one thing to keep in mind during setup. The feeder has to be as close to the router as possible, preferably less than 6 meters away. The scheduling part was extremely quick and intuitive. You can set multiple meals a day, and each day can be configured separately. There's also the option of repeating the schedule on the days you want to, which is awesome, as it gives you total flexibility. With the tap of your finger, you can quickly create or delete any meal. You even have the option to record a message that will play when food is delivered, which I did manually. Once the feeder is added, you can rename it, and each device is configured separately. The Wi-Fi feeders and the camera feeder all have a 5-liter storage capacity and can feed your pet between 1 and 50 portions per meal. The feeders have 4 buttons and 4 indicators. In addition to scheduling meals, you can also feed your pet instantly by using the application or by unlocking the device and pressing the manual feeding button. According to the manual, a portion is approximately 10 grams, and it takes about six tries for the feeder to be calibrated. I tested each feeder multiple times before beginning the test. The first few amounts were inconsistent, but after that, each portion was approximately 12 grams. I synchronized all three Wi-Fi feeders and configured them to give each cat a portion four times a day. Since I wanted to make sure the devices did what they promised, I monitored almost every meal to see if the meal was actually served. Additionally, I placed the same amount of food in each feeder and weighed the food again after four and eight days to see if my cats had received the right amount of food. Now that we know the rules of the game, let's see how the devices performed. First of all, we have to talk about the stars of the show, our cats. They were a bit reluctant and even afraid at first, but by the end of the eight days, they were completely used to the feeders, even my easily scared female cats. This means that getting used to a feeder likely won't be a problem for your pet. I monitored the device continuously for the first two days and was quite impressed. The feeders gave food at the exact time I programmed and never missed a meal. You can even check if a meal has been delivered through the log feature in the application. When we needed to leave for two days, we were able to continue checking the log. By the way, the application can notify you if a device is offline, though you'll have to enable this function first. At the end of the first four days, we weighed the amount of food left in our three Wi-Fi feeders. Surprisingly enough, all three feeders had released more food than expected. Two out of three were giving out a portion size of about 15 grams, while the third one seemed to release even more food at about 18 grams per portion. We wanted to ensure we didn't make any mistakes, so we continued testing the feeder that gave the most food. We replaced one of the other feeders with a camera feeder and used differently shaped kibbles in each device. We also decided to reduce the number of meals to three per day, as our cats require approximately 45 grams of dry food. We continued our test while also trying out the new feeder's camera feature which proved to be incredibly useful. You can turn it on anytime and check on your pet. That's awesome, since you can ensure your pet is okay and that the device delivered the meal. You can also talk to your pet using the call feature. The device can record what it films, though we did 
didn't end up trying this feature. Another great feature is that you can listen in on what's happening in your home if you want to. Plus, you can set the device to notify you when it detects motion or sound. And yes, you can adjust the sensitivity level. In terms of motion detection, the device works quite well and takes a screenshot of the source of the movement. For the sound detection, it only seems to detect loud noises and doesn't take any screenshots. Surprisingly, the device's field of view is quite wide, so you can spy on your cat even when they're not eating. The camera's infrared sensor gives it night vision capabilities, and the camera's quality in low light conditions is really good. Overall, I was very impressed with all the features provided by the camera feeder. On the sixth day, we decided to take the test one step further. We switched off the power and the Wi-Fi 10 minutes before the program delivery time and kept it off for over an hour. We wanted to see if the feeders would continue to deliver the meals. Unfortunately, none of the devices managed to serve the meal, even though they were powered on through their batteries. The meal was skipped and the feeders delivered the next meal one hour early. We only managed to get the feeders to deliver on time again by resetting two of the feeders, a process that requires you to add the devices again, and changing the schedule of the third one to one hour later than it was set. After a few days, we realized the devices probably skipped the meals due to their internal schedules being desynchronized and turned back one hour. We decided to test this theory several days later. This time, we switched off the power and the Wi-Fi for more than an hour before mealtime. The Wi-Fi feeders delivered the meals one hour earlier than usual, while the camera feeder delivered the meal on time. It was a bit confusing since the camera feeder was working correctly now, but then we remembered that the application had an update, and that's probably why. Still, we were relieved to see that all the devices still worked, even if the Wi-Fi feeders served their meals one hour earlier. The log part of the application worked relatively okay, but I'll talk more about that later. We told Pet Libro about this issue, and they quickly responded. They explained that the device could not automatically calibrate by itself if it was in the EU, and they usually test the product in the US. Since we live in Europe, that makes sense. They assured us they were working on fixing the issue as soon as possible. And now, the final test. How much food did the feeders deliver over the eight days? The camera feeder and two Wi-Fi feeders had similar results, about 15 grams per portion. However, the third Wi-Fi feeder had released about 17 grams per portion, keeping in mind that our tests have a margin of error. Let's quickly list the pros of the granary feeders. The application is really easy to use and highly customizable. The device lets you know if the meal has been successfully served, and it only records a meal if it's actually been delivered. The cats can't feed themselves, even if they accidentally touch the manual feeding button, as the feeder needs to be unlocked first. The feeder has a desiccant bag to preserve the food. The feeders work with both 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz Wi-Fi networks. The 5-liter tank holds a large amount of food. The food bowl is made from stainless steel. The feeder notifies you, both through the application and the feeder's physical indicators, if an error occurs or if the amount of food is too low. The application lets you know if the device is offline. The food container can be detached and washed fairly easily. The design of the feeders is neat and can seamlessly fit into every house. The device has an outlet-blocked sensor, which was incredibly useful as we had incorrectly plugged one feeder in the first time we used it. The feeder doesn't release food if shaken, no matter how hard we try. And now, the two most important positive aspects. The feeders came with an external transformer that converts the outlet's output voltage to 5 volts. That means the feeder's electrical cables wouldn't hurt our cats if they were chewed. Plus, they're reinforced to deter the cats from chewing them in the first place. The feeders are reliable. During the eight days of testing, they only missed one meal, and that was due to the Wi-Fi being disconnected right before the meal. Every meal the feeders recorded as delivered was actually served. Here are some aspects to consider before we move on to the downsides. The feeders can only be used with dry food. You may need an adapter if ordering from outside of the US. The feeders should not be more than six meters away from the router. The feeders need to be calibrated after each cleaning. In the event of a power outage, the camera feeder is automatically disconnected from the Wi-Fi, even if the Wi-Fi is still available. In contrast, the classic Wi-Fi feeders stay connected. You might lose your log if you reset the feeder. Did I notice any downsides while using the devices? Firstly, the portion sizes varied depending on the feeder and or the size of the kibbles. But to be fair, they specify that a portion is 20 milliliters, which can vary due to the kibble size. Still, the portion sizes, especially for one of the Wi-Fi feeders, were quite off from the approximately 10 grams specified. I highly recommend performing the same test we did, as it will show you precisely how much a portion weighs. For our cats, a portion size of 15 grams is perfect, but even if the portion size doesn't perfectly match your cat's needs, you can sometimes 
time to skip a meal so your cat won't put on extra weight. Secondly, when the Wi-Fi was disconnected, the feeders skipped a meal and needed to be reset to deliver the meals on time. After that, one feeder recorded the wrong hour on the log but delivered the food on time. As I mentioned, these issues should not occur if you're from North America, and Pat Libro is already working on fixing them. Additionally, during our testing, we received a few notifications that the feeders were blocked, only to find that wasn't the case. The food was successfully served, so I recommend checking if the feeder delivers before worrying that something's wrong. What are the prices of these granary feeders? Right now, the cost of the Wi-Fi feeder is $95, while the camera feeder is sold for $140. That's the full price without any discount. If you have multiple cats that eat the same type of food, you can also opt for the dual food Wi-Fi feeders. Besides the initial cost, you should expect to spend about $5 a month per feeder for the desiccant bags, a very reasonable price. You can find links to both feeders in the description, as well as a promo code for a nice discount. Would I recommend the granary feeders? The granary feeders from Pet Libro are great if you're going on vacation and want to minimize visits from a pet sitter. Plus, if you leave for just one night, I think most cats can do fine on their own. They're also excellent for people working away from home for most of the day, as cats prefer to be fed multiple small meals a day. The feeders can solve the issue of your cats waking you up in the morning when they're hungry. The feeders are reliable and worked almost perfectly during the eight days we tested them and afterward as we continue to use them. I would definitely recommend them to every cat owner for all of the aforementioned reasons. And if you want to be extra careful, I suggest connecting your Wi-Fi router to a UPS. Of the two versions of the devices, I recommend getting the camera feeder since you can see and hear what your pet is up to and even talk to them. It can monitor movement and loud noises, recording what's happening in your home. It has a wide range of viewing options and I think the extra money is totally worth it. If you already have an indoor camera, however, the Wi-Fi feeder works just as well. Check out the links in the description and give this video a like if you enjoyed it. See you in the next video!